liquor show. So today on the liquor show we're talking about Grand Monnier, which is this liqueur right out in front of us. Uh, this is technically Grand Monnier Cordon Rouge, means red ribbon. Uh, the company was around for like 60 years, it was founded in the 1820s, it was around until the 1880s before they even came up with this product. They make mm. various fruity, sugary liqueurs by mixing, yeah, shit with fruit. Uh, some of those still exist today. You can occasionally find a bottle of cherry manier or banana manier or something. Banana. But, not really. But uh, what we're here to talk <laughs> about today is Grand Manier, Cordon Rouge, and its various other special editions. Which is to say, this is your basic Grand Manier Cordon Rouge. It is 49% uh, orange liqueur, I believe, 51% cognac. Possibly that's the other way around. Uh, this is uh, Louis Alexander, which is sort of a much harder to find special uh, Grand Manier. This one is like 82% cognac and 18% mm. orange. That so, sounds much better. Much better mix. Well, <laughs> don't get, don't put the cart in front of the horse. Uh, so if you're buying these in a shop, this is about. 60 bucks Australian dollary dues this is about a hundred much mm. more premium product and then you have this guy this is the uh, 100 anniversary which uh, very hard to find came out in the uh, 1920s 1927 if uh, if memory serves for the 100 anniversary of the company uh, in fact it says it right here on the bottle uh, yeah. so uh, yeah the idea with that is same mix, same 82% cognac, but it uses much better cognac. It uses uh, XO, you know, it's nicer... A bit more fancy. Yeah, fruity cognacs. Mm -hmm. And then you have this guy, the uh, 150 anniversary. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, the tagline of this product, when it was used to be marketed in the 80s, was that it was uh, impossible to find, difficult to pronounce, and yet it's the best thing we make. Uh, I think there's expensive somewhere in there. Uh, I will now attempt to pronounce it. I believe it's something like uh, Cuvée du Special Cinquante Centenaire or something. Uh, anyway, it is the idea is it's the same thing as these other ones, except the cognacs in this are like aged 50 years and up. They're like rare, perfect, special cognacs. When you can find this, which you can't, they might even make any more. Uh, these days, they this is not even on the website. I emailed them once and said, "Do you still make it?" And they were very like evasive. Uh, there's another one that's called like 1880, which sort of seems like it's replacing this in the range, but doesn't say anything about anniversaries or ages of cognacs. So, how did you get your hands on a bottle? You just got to get lucky. You gotta <laughs> look. It took me years of searching. Uh, the holy grail. Yeah, this cost me about 300, I think, maybe 350. I don't know. So yeah. 60, 100, 200, 300, let's say, for the purposes of uh, whatever. So the real question, liquor show viewers, that we're here to solve, educate you on today, is we're going to see if this is worth the money, because Becky is going to blind taste these perfect liqueurs. So if she can't identify which one is the Grand Manier, Cordon Rouge, the regular one, it's a failure. You're fucking wasting a dollar spending it on this stuff. And if she correctly identifies them and says that they're better in this order, then... Uh, then spend the money. Baby, we've, yeah. uh, we've just sold some Grand Manier. There's also another one in the new range these days called uh, Grand Manier Quintessence, which is mm. like 1200 bucks. It's like a... Next comes in a diamond slipper. Too expensive. <laughs> Alright, please put on your uh, your blindfold. I'm gonna prepare on this little little list, viewers. Uh, I'm gonna mark which... You can't see a thing? I cannot see a thing. Alright. You'll have to trust me, but yeah, definitely not. You're gonna have to put the glass in my hand. Because, uh... No camera tricks. I, well, I'm just gonna pour all the glasses and then you can uh, take off the blindfold. Oh, okay, okay, that's much easier. I'm writing them down on my <laughs> secret key here. There is a kind of rate of failure here. I mean, what if I like 
the basic one better than I like the really expensive one. Well, then we will have proved that uh, it's not worth spending the money. This is what we will have proved. Okay. I think I just uh, screwed up. I wrote down the wrong one for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, viewers. The integrity of the test is intact. I, uh... Scientific method is unassailable. Yeah. I failed to read the text on the back of the bottles. It was the only problem. So you wouldn't mix these with anything, would you? Uh, you probably wouldn't mix the expensive ones. The, uh... I mean, it's pretty good on pancakes, the old uh, grand one, yeah? yeah? It's pretty good in everything. Anything where that? that calls for Cointreau or uh, any kind of orange cursal is greatly enhanced by the presence of Grand Manier. Mm. Alright, viewers, I prepared this secret key and put it where no one yep. shall find it. I don't want to see it. Into my pocket, which I can't get open. Oh, wouldn't Whatever. it be cool if I was a magician and I could, you know... Yes, this is a you. <laughs> mentalism trick. <laughs> right, you may remove the blindfold. Okay. So these uh, these glasses are one, two, three, and four. Each contains an orange flavoured elixir of some kind. Oh, and in this light they're also similar looking as well. Like I, I would have no idea. Yeah. You could... Well, I don't know. How do you want to do this? I Should guess... I go left or right? Well, ultimately we want to find which one you prefer. Yeah. So, it doesn't really matter which order you go in. True. I mean, one would hope that I haven't put them in orders one, two, three, four. <laughs> Maybe I have. Who knows? That's the failure of the secret key. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to start from this side. Alright. Alright. Well, it smells really good. Smells more cognac y than orangey, I would say, but having been the first one that I'm smelling tonight, I can't really have anything to compare it to. Mm. Well, I like that. It's, it's, um, it's quite smooth. It's not what I remember Grand Marnier tasting like, although. I think my experience of tasting it on its own is very scant. Yes, I should note, I believe Becky has had this one before, the 150. I don't think she's ever had the uh, Louis Alexander or the 100. Mm, okay. I assume we've had the Cordon Rouge at some point. Many times, but not on its own. Okay, number two. Scintillating television viewers. Mm. Uh, I believe so. The the liqueur that's a Manier family that uh, owned. Maybe they still own this uh, this distillery. And uh, I don't know who Lou Alexander was. I guess he was uh, someone who came along. I think he was the guy who invented the Cordon Rouge variety, but probably not the original founder of the company because, as I say, it was invented 60 years after their foundation. Mm. So it's like a vanity kind of bottle. The rumor on the street is that this 150 was their like personal family reserve that they would just make for themselves and their friends, and then uh, you know that's when they came along for their anniversary. They decided to bottle it. So this second one um, was still really smooth, like on the back of the palate, but it had a lot more of a alcoholy taste. Like as soon as I sipped it, it was it sort of invaded my sinuses. So I feel that was yeah. I don't know. Mm. We'll see how we go. Number three. This is really a double blind test because I can't remember which one I put in which, so I'm not sure what <laughs> you're talking about. And this one is very different. Yeah, it doesn't have the sort of round, rounded mouthfeel of the, the either of these two, but it has the same sort of overall flavour. Hmm. Another feature of the uh, 150 is it has this hand-painted bottle. These uh, these oranges and fruits are hand-painted by artisans. It also comes in. Uh, they have one that's more in the style of, of these ones, more of a clear, sort of modern aesthetic. But uh, this one, 
Uh, obviously, it matches the Cordon Rouge bottle a bit better. It comes in like a book bookcase sort of box. Uh, pretty nice. They all, yeah, these two both come in boxes. I don't think these two do. Hmm. Well. How do you feel? Yeah. <laughs> You're bamboozled <laughs> by this uh, Grand little, Manier I test. I am a little. No, I can, I can... I feel like in my head I know what the most expensive one is and the cheapest one. But as far as my enjoyment, there's a tie. No, it's, uh, here's the uh, refuge official answer key. Okay, so what's your? F well, we'll do it on two categories then. What's your favorite, and what's your? Uh, what do you think is what? Okay, so the second one was my favorite. Okay, and I think it was this one. So the second one she thinks is the one hundred. Yeah. Okay. Um, my second favorite was this one, the number one, mm -hmm. and I think that was the saint Cartagena. That was number one? Yes. You think it was the 150? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My god. <laughs> <laughs> um, and these two I can't quite figure, but I think number three was the Cordon Rouge. And number four was whatever number two is called, the uh, Louis Alexander. And you don't have a preference between those two? No, not between those two. I would say they're both very similar to me. Like, I can taste the difference, but in enjoyment it was the same. Like, Yeah, it's very unlikely, viewers, but hopefully we had the... Uh good sense to put graphics up on the screen that already tell you what happened <laughs> Showing here. me if I'm like right or not. <laughs> well, I will tell you, you have correctly picked two and incorrectly picked two others. Damn it. That's just chance. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so, so what am I correct about? Uh, you are correct about the Cordon Rouge and the Louis Alexander. And you have incorrectly picked the two others, which means that the one that you prefer the most is the 150. The most expensive one. <laughs> the one you prefer the second most <laughs> is the 100. <laughs> and you prefer the uh, Cordon Rouge and the Louis Alexander equally in that you don't like either of them. So viewers, there we go. Based on one girl's blind test, we have conclusively proved <laughs> The more money you spend on Grand Manier, the better that money is spent. Agreed. There we go. That's the liquor show. <laughs> <laughs> know your liquor.